Hi, everybody. Hello. Great to see so many familiar faces out there. Yeah. So I'm Sherita Carter. I'm the producer of this attraction, and I have a history at Walt Disney Imagineering of leading a theatrical and scenic illusion team. And I'm very happy to say that a lot of what has been developed over in the, uh, the last couple of years will be a major part of bringing this attraction to all of you. And uh, I'm just really happy to be here for the 30th anniversary of the park. I've been an Imagineer for 40 years. On this attraction, by the way, I'm the show writer and the creative director. And I've been an Imagineer for over 40 years. And in fact, I worked on a lot of the elements on the original park here 30 years ago. So it's, it's really fun. And then I've, I've had the honor to bring added magic to the park in Twilight Zone Tower of Terror and Rock and Roller Coaster and uh, Toy Story and Mania. And my last major project was Cars on the Radio Springs Racers uh, at Disney California Adventure. And what's really amazing is, is when I've had the opportunity and the honor and the privilege to bring an attraction to life from the, the spark of an idea to the opening day, which I like to call affectionately from the spark to the park, like Toy Story Mania, uh, like Radiator Springs Racers. I love it. I absolutely love it when I get that feel in my gut that we have something really special. And I have to say that with Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, I have that that feeling just amazing. It's it's in me. And Sharita can tell you every once in a while I do a little happy dancing because things are going so well. And, <laughs> Isn't she great? We even dress alike together. We're, just, we're, we're a team. team. We're a team. But uh, but I have to say, of of all the attractions that, that I've helped to bring to life in parks all around the world, a bold statement, but I want to say this is my very favorite. I have a little, a, a little background on the concept uh, ideation for Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway. I was really inspired by two things. One is kind of the comedy and the cadence and the music and the off-register stylized look of the new series of Mickey and Minnie uh, shorts, the cartoon short series. I think they're up to 100 now. They're really funny and edgy. And, um, and what we brought along today is a sample of one of the 100, not necessarily our favorite, but just one, just to give you a, an idea. When, it, when I originally pitched this idea to management, the one line that I used was, you get to ride inside a Mickey cartoon short. You get to have an adventure. It's your adventure. You're like a fish out of water story in the cartoon world. Uh, as Phil mentioned, it's the first Mickey ride through attraction ever. Um, we wanted to introduce an imaginary generated original story and a theme song that's exclusive to the attraction in the spirit of Yo Ho Yo Ho and Grin Grin Ghosts and It's a Small World. And trust us, it sticks in your head. It's doesn't it? <laughs> so, uh, not that this short is, is indicative of our story for the attraction, because it's a story, brand new story, nobody knows what it is yet. But, uh, but it captures the flavor and kind of the feel and the essence and the fun uh, of the, the experience when you get to ride inside a Mickey uh, cartoon short, in addition to uh, a lot of the, the amazing work that, that Sharita and her, um, her scenic uh, illusions team has been inventing and developing just this amazing theatrical showmanship, a new way of delivering theater. Um, she's been working on this with her team for the past 10 years, and it's kind of arrived at a place where we're gonna deliver it's theater, <laughs> yeah, theater like, like you've never seen it before. So those two things um, really helped to bring the idea home and, and Mickey's first attraction. Right, right, so that was zany, and it was fun, it had fun cadence, it had a um, variety of characters, cartoon logic, cartoon yeah. physics, Okay, so who does not want to be in a cartoon, a Mickey Short cartoon? Is there anybody here interested in doing that? <laughs> well, I'm happy to tell you that that's exactly what we are doing with Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. And um, what's so great about it is, is it's going into the Chinese theater, and uh, what we did was design the marquee out in front of the Chinese theater, kind of in keeping with the spirit of the marquees, and in the heyday of Hollywood with the Chinese theater, they used to create exclusive uh, custom marquees, big, big deal for the premieres. And so, hearkening back to that, our attraction marquee, which is gonna go in the center section of the Chinese theater, uh, is gonna be, you know, like they did from Ben-Hur and all these movies they, they premiered there, with no exception, uh, Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway, and here comes the best part, it is, neon -y and animated! It's really going to be cute. You're going to see it all the way down the end of Hollywood Boulevard, and that's going to draw you down the street to the forecourt of the Chinese Theater, where our adventure begins, our story begins, because we're here today uh, to see Mickey and Minnie's, uh, the premiere of Mickey and Minnie's latest short, 
But, you know, people ask, why are you putting Mickey and Minnie in the Chinese theater specifically? And it's a good question, but really, there's a lot of history that, that they both have at the Chinese theater. 1931, Mickey Steps Out premiered at the Chinese theater. A couple of years later, 1933, uh, Mickey's Gala premiere, which not only premiered at the Chinese theater, but it featured the Chinese, Grauman's Chinese theater, with a lot of celebrities uh, from back in the day, including a little cameo by Walt Disney himself. Um, but um, it, so that that sir, the Chinese theater service is the perfect for I mean, what better place than the heart of the park to put Mickey and Minnie anyway? But the front door of the Chinese theater lends itself perfectly that we're here to this attraction story, that we're here to see the premiere of Mickey and Minnie's latest short, which is called Perfect, perfect Picnic. Picnic. And uh, so you'll go into a theater to see the premiere of uh, Perfect Picnic, and the short is all about Mickey and Minnie packing up for the picnic. Um, nothing's going to get in their way today. They're going to have the greatest picnic ever. And uh, in this first part, kind of the pre-show of the attraction, we're going to introduce guests to your adventure, uh, your fish out of in water story, fish out of water story in the in the cartoon world, um, and also introduce you to the singable, lovable, ever uh, amazing uh, attraction theme song. Um, what happens is, uh, at, and during the course of watching the short, something happens before your very eyes that is very cool. I'm not going to tell you about <laughs> it. But that allows a portal in, from the human world into the cartoon world into which all of the, the only rules we have is we're following the rules of the shorts where we're not, we're not doing like real theatrical um, details like real bricks and real shiny surfaces and things like that because it all, it's hand drawn. Every square inch of the attraction experience is in the art directed style of the cartoon shorts. Okay, so here's an example. So as all of you know, the Walt Disney Company is very rich in its heritage in terms of theatrical techniques and um, technology. And we are drawing upon all of that. And then we're building upon that foundation with new technology and new techniques to really provide an immersive um, environment for our guests. And one of our welcome design challenges was the fact that the cartoon shorts has a, has a very 2D uh, flat style and translating that into a dimensional environment so that we can invite all of our guests into it was a really welcomed uh, design challenge. So we get to go to the park where Mickey and Minnie are, are heading for their picnic, uh, Runamuck Park, and uh, we're gonna hop on board the Runamuck Railroad for a, a great little tour around the park. And um, our adventure begins when we see uh, the friends, Mickey and Minnie and Goofy all together in the first scene of the attraction. And after that, anything goes. As Sharita said, forget the rules of logic, forget the rules of physics. It's gonna be one surprise after another. All right, so just talking about that design language, um, it's, it was very important for, as Kevin said, to stay within the rules of the animated shorts. So to give you one example, there are no shiny or reflective surfaces in the cartoon world, yet we are bringing you into that dimensional world. So we had to take, to, we had to great lengths to make sure that we we're hand painting and printing so that we could really, really stay true to that style. And I'm going to give you a quick example of that. So what we have here is, this is a model, it's about two feet of um, the locomotive. This is an early rendition, but it, it gives you a great idea of where we're, where we're going with this. So uh, we had the model shop put this together, and then what we did was, we both painted and printed. And as you can see, there are no shiny uh, reflections or uh, surfaces there. It's all hand done. And in order for us to tell our story, um, we really need this locomotive to, um, to live in both a, light, a, a white light and a dark light world. So we also came up with a special painting technique. So what you're looking at here is how it looks in a white light scene, and this is how it looks in a black light scene. It's, it's really stunning. I just love this locomotive. Um, and um, so that's part of the look of it. The sound of it is, uh, the soundscape is a great story unto itself. Uh, for the look of it, we uh, reached out to Joseph Holt, who was the original art director for the first, for the first series, uh, the first season, a couple of seasons, and he's the one that kind of created that off-register, flat, amazing uh, cartoon look. And so he came in as a consultant with us to work on making sure that we're sticking to, the only rules we're sticking to is this attraction are the rules of the design so that it's all very believable. But uh, one of the things I'm, I'm just over the top excited about 
is the music. I mean, I am a huge fan. I grew up in Disneyland. I love all the attractions with original theme songs. And so I always said that oh, someday I'm going to work on an attraction that has an original theme song that people can't get out of their heads. And so, and it's here. And we, um, we uh, went to Christopher Willis, Chris Willis, who is he's just, just the most amazing, most talented. He, he came up with original scores and adapted kind of the, 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 um, the arrangements and all the Mickey shorts, over a hundred of them. He did all of that. Uh, he's a machine. And what's been so fun about working with Chris is it's kind of like the old days of the Disney studios where the musicians and the animators had to relearn their craft in the three dimensions and immersive experiences for the theme park world. And Chris is such a huge park fan, like the rest of us, and he jumped on board and he accepted this challenge. And um, he not only created a, what we just love this, this attraction theme song, but um, and we're, we're scoring the whole thing like a movie. We use a 65 piece orchestra, we have a 24 voice vocal chorus. Uh, it's the, the soundscape alone is stunning. And the other part of that story, not just the music, the whole thing is a musical, by the way, not just the music, but the, the soundscape itself. That's Kevin right there on the <laughs> So speaking of the 30th anniversary, this was a couple of years before, it's probably 1986-ish, I'm saying, I'm thinking. But Jimmy McDonald is there on the far right. And Jimmy McDonald became a dear friend, a dear family friend. Next to me there is Joe Harrington. Joe and I worked on many, many attractions together, including Rock and Roller Coaster Raiders, Wings Racers. Uh, Joe is kind of a, a good luck charm. He's amazing. He is our sound effects wizard, and so we go back many years. Um, and uh, and Jimmy, for those of you, I'm sure all of you know about Jimmy, but Jimmy was the voice of Mickey Mouse for 38 years. Uh, when Walt was getting too busy during Fun and Fancy Free, um, during Mickey and the Beanstalk, Walt called Jimmy into his office and said, Jimmy, I'm just getting too busy to provide the voice for Mickey. Now it's your job. So, so from uh, Mickey and the Beanstalk all the way through to 1977, uh, Jimmy provided the voice of Mickey, and not only that, he kind of headed up uh, the sound effects department at the studio. Over the years, there we are on a set um, with Jimmy, Joe, Joe and myself, um, and he was just the greatest guy. Over his, his career, uh, from 1934 to 1977-ish, Jimmy actually hand-built and created the sound effects devices out of like wood and steel and you know, hubcaps and you name it uh, to, to deliver sound. I mean, all of the TV shows and movies I saw growing up, Jimmy did all the sound for. He created over 20,000 effects. And we now kind of lovingly own those and cherish those at Imagineering. Um, and I'm very happy to say that, uh, that we decided uh, that, you know, t in today's day and age with digital everything, and you know, you can just grab files that you need and, and it's very convenient. Because it's Mickey and because we love this so much. We, we decided to go old school and we're creating the entire sound effects, all the soundscape, everything that surrounds you in this amazing attraction is done lovingly by hand and by foot and by voice. <laughs> um, so, and many using a lot of Jimmy's original contraptions that we got out of storage, dusted it off and we're using them. Um, and so uh, it's just, and in honor of Jimmy, I mean, look at his connection to Mickey, not only the voice of Mickey, but provided all the sound effects for all the cartoon shorts over the years. And we've really, really been having a blast yeah. with, with creating those, that soundscape. So what we have next is one of the things that, uh, um, there's, there are so many surprises in this attraction. There's so much history and heritage back to the Walt Disney Company and the way things used to be done. What you're seeing here is a photograph of one of the original three whistles that was used in Steamboat Willie. Um, as you know, the first sound, sound uh, uh, cartoon from 1928. And uh, it's a tritone whistle, and we decided to use that very whistle for the sound of Goofy's locomotive on the train. Because, so, yeah, I think we can do better. I, yeah, just, I think uh, so. I think uh, we have a celebrity <laughs> artist, a little piece of Disney history. This is the whistle, everybody, from 1928, Steamboat Willie. Okay. I'm, I'm just, you know, so honored to be holding this. And, uh, and so uh, what's so great about it is, again, this will be the sound of, of the whistle on um, uh, Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway, and it sounds something like this. Oh, 
How cool is that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot So that's just one example of how we're, we're taking this old school, new school, blending it together to create a unique experience for all of the guests. You know, I have to say, all aboard for one goofy adventure. Again, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of our dream that after you experience this attraction, you're coming back to the unload area. And there's more to see and experience in this attraction than you'll have time for. It's just, it's, it's, it's 10 pounds of showmanship in a five pound bag. And so it's kind of our dream when you get back to the unload area that you're gonna say, what the heck was that? Let's go ride it again, you know? So it's, 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 uh, it's all about your adventure. And we're very proud to say also it is a full family attraction. So it'll be fun for everyone. That's it. And um, with Goofy as your engineer, what, what could possibly, possibly go wrong? wrong. <laughs> so, thank you, everybody. Back to Phil. Yeah. <laughs>